With the cost of living creeping up month after month, and with the finance ministers warning for weeks that the government cannot compensate every single Canadian, the message in today's federal economic and fiscal statement is unequivocal. The economy is slowing down, the country may face a recession, but the government says it has a plan. A plan that supports Canadians and uh, builds an economy that works for everyone. This in an economy influenced mostly by forces outside of the government's control. A pandemic, a war in Europe, disrupted global supply chains, energy shortages and climate. All inflationary forces that are making life less affordable. The fact of the matter is that the, the sort of the tools that the government has are pretty li limited in that case because the economy is definitely affected by international uh, changes. Inflation remains high at 6.9 percent and the central bank has raised its rate to 3.75 to compensate, forcing Canadians to tighten their belts while the government reigns in spending somewhat. What we've been doing throughout is to strike a balance between necessary compassion and support for Canadians and fiscal responsibility. The projected federal deficit for 2022-2023 is $36.4 billion. In a worst-case scenario, a possible recession, it would climb to slightly over $49 billion, still lower than what was projected in the spring budget. It's actually a very difficult environment to know exactly how you should maneuver policy. Meaning if the government spends too much, it would be fueling inflation. But there are affordability measures for low-income Canadians, totaling slightly over $6 billion, including these previously announced programs. Doubling of the GST credit, the dental benefit, a top-up to the housing benefit, a Hurricane Fiona recovery fund, and the government is setting aside a $1 billion reserve fund for this coming year. There really are measures here that are targeted at the people who need it the most. And there are new and some improved programs. Elimination of interest on federal student loans and making the Canada workers benefit a quarterly payment. Corporations will not be spared. The government will impose a 2% tax on corporate share buybacks to encourage them to reinvest in their domestic operations and workers. The government says it is being prudent in uncertain times, keeping its powder dry in case things get worse and the country does move into a recession, something the minister did not want to mention until today. Joyce Napier, CTV News, Ottawa.